My name is Sean Ross with the Art of Retouching Studio. In this video, I will be discussing the many different aspects of things that you can do to make your days as a freelancer more profitable and raising the quality of your personal time. This video is part three in a series of how to succeed as a freelancer. You can click to the link in the description below if you want to go back and watch the previous videos, although there's no need to watch them in any particular order. But if you take the time to watch them all, I will have given you every freelancer trick that I can think of to help you thrive. From finding clients to keeping them coming back, success truly is within your reach. Be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Limit information intake. I have a client that loves to plan for everything. He often wants to talk about a task for 30 minutes on the phone. I do it because it makes him feel like we accomplished something. However, my general takeaway is that I could have gotten the condensed key elements sent to me in a text message. I often say, make a plan, execute the plan. The plan goes off the rails, make a new plan. But this can be difficult with clients that like to micromanage and plan for so long, you eventually just forget to actually do anything about it basically discussing it long enough so that it's no longer relevant. This is the ready, aim, aim, aim mentality. This is the exact opposite of how I work, which is closer to ready, fire, aim, and simply adjust course as we go. I prefer to limit the amount of distractions. I can't be producing work and getting paid if I spend my time planning for it. I often tell my clients, especially when there's something they need as soon as possible, that I can't work if I'm on the phone talking about what needs to get done. Send me an email. Practice saying no. I say no to my clients all the time. There is no point in taking new work if you don't have enough time to do the old work. For those clients that are a bit more demanding, explain that you can only take on new work starting in a week or two from now. This is a good way to be working anyway. It sets you up for future work and helps you manage time today without them asking, is it done yet, for the next week. New clients. If you are in the market for new clients, make sure that you don't spend all of your energy and time wooing them. Potential clients are exactly that, potential. They are not real clients just yet, so try your best to set up an automatic workflow during the initial stage of seeing whether or not you're both good fit to work together. The reason this is important is because as a freelancer, your time is everything. Think about it. You're already dedicating hours and hours of your time working for your existing clients. You don't want to be giving up your free time for those people that are just not worth it. Set aside work time for running your business. As a business owner, you are not only responsible for the actual work, but also all of the administrative, financial, research, development, sales, and marketing tasks. Be sure that you schedule time in your workday to seek out future job opportunities, maintain client relationships, manage the finances, schedule social media points, maintain your website, and all those other tasks that are now yours to deal with. Schedule time for all of those activities during the hours you want to be working, not during your off hours. People pay for your results. Clients are not interested in what it takes to do what you do. They are only interested in the results that you give them. Was it well worth the money? You better make sure that it was, or they will hire someone else the next time. The sooner you accept it, the sooner you can succeed. It's also important to manage expectations early on before you even begin working for that client, just so you can avoid any finger pointing or something else when things don't go as planned. People love to play the blame game, and no matter how nice and cooperative the client may seem at first glance, they may do a complete 180 when things go horribly wrong. From the get-go, make sure that you set clear deliverables and deadlines so that you're both well aware of what's happening throughout the entire process. If you're going to be taking on a huge project, try to break it up into chunks so that the client has a chance to check on it to make sure that you're on the right track every so often. Plenty of mistakes can be easily avoided if you keep in communication lines open between yourself and your client at all times. Everyone hates excuses. It's natural to mess up. Nobody is perfect. Your clients will understand if you own up to your mistakes and do your best to redeem yourself. What they will not understand is you making excuses. Don't waste your time explaining to your client why this isn't quite right. Just admit it. Learn from it. Fix it. Your time and energy should be spent on trying to correct your mistake rather than coming up with lame reasons why something didn't turn out the way that you meant it to. This is also where good communication comes in handy. When you hit a bump in the road, then you feel that your client should know about it, alert them to the issue right away before things get out of hand. Don't just shrug and hope for the best. Quality, not quantity. 
It's all about quality. Your priority should be to produce the best output for your clients so that they will keep hiring you or even recommend you to somebody else. This will eventually provide you with a steady circle of clients who love what you do, and if you keep providing them with top-notch work, more and more clients will be clamoring for your expertise. Who wouldn't want that? I've been freelancing for over 10 years now, and I've got clients that come out of the woodwork all the time. I start the day thinking I don't have any work planned, and yet, poof, now I've got a ton of work. It's really cool. I should also mention that quality is better than quantity when it comes to your clients, too. A handful of really good ones who provide you with a steady stream of income and whom you're comfortable working with is way better than tons and tons of crappy ones. Besides, not all of them will fall absolutely in love with your work and your style, so don't stress yourself out trying to please everyone. Also remember that 20% of your clients will take up 80% of your time, so please be choosy on who you decide to work with and who you don't. Treat freelancing as a job. In this always connected world that we live in, maintaining a work-life balance has become increasingly more difficult. When working from home, the lines between work and life are even more blurred. While the freelance lifestyle affords you the freedom to work for yourself anytime and from anywhere you choose, this lack of boundaries can quickly make freelance work an overwhelming presence in your life. One of the most difficult things a freelancer often struggles with is to keep the work-life hours in balance. Well, balanced. Because you're not bound by a regular time clock where you log in and log out at the end of each day, your schedule tends to spiral out of control and days and nights can bleed into each other without you realizing it. My family has suffered at times because I had a really hard time leaving work. Because I work from home, my clients often think that their hours are my hours. Additionally, I find that I'm always on call day and night. A better way of working is to set up office hours with your clients and stick with them. Personally, I don't schedule work on Fridays, ever. That's more of a catch-up day for me. Business, personal, or just bike riding. I'll schedule some work during the weekends, but Fridays for me are no commitments. If you keep working like a dog day in and day out with no regard for personal time and weekends with loved ones, you might just wake up one day and realize you've overworked yourself, taken all the fun out of freelancing, and forgotten why you're even doing what you're doing in the first place. A good client will know how to respect your boundaries and requirements just as they expect you to respect theirs. Again, this is one of those important things you ought to look for when building that coveted circle of trusted clients. Pick the ones that you really want to work with and those who really want to work with you. Then, once you've got that relationship built, maintain it with the TLC that it deserves. Don't screw up relationships. I had a great client, and he gave me a ton of work, so much that I had to hire not one, but two retouching assistants. At some point, he started complaining about the color. I kept saying it was fine, and he kept saying everything was orange. It was a back and forth for about two months. I ended up losing 100% of that work. It wasn't until the very end that I finally drove for hours to his location to see what he was complaining about. Sure enough, everything looked bright yellow and nuclear orange. It made no sense. Eventually, I figured out that my high-end monitor was failing and no longer showing me anything even close to true color. I bought a new monitor and was back in business. Unfortunately, his partner said that I couldn't do any more retouching work for them. This is when I lost a lot in my personal life. You can go to my other YouTube channel, Finance on a Budget, to learn more about what happened in my life at that point. I had to wait a year doing smaller projects, but eventually I gained that trust back. But if I was diligent, I should have stopped and addressed the issue long before I actually did. I really could have lost my biggest client. Don't let that happen to you. If you did like this video, please go to www.theartofretouching.com where you can find more tips and tricks to make you a better photo retoucher.